What do you think about the SpeedyB Master 5 HD frame? Asks, uh, oh, I'm not, I don't know how to read your name. It's in, I'm going to guess Arabic. Uh, but I'll answer your question. What do you think about the SpeedyB Master 5 frame? So what I look for in a frame is that it has at least one innovative, different feature that makes me go, oh, they were really thinking. When you show, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick a frame and, and embarrass a particular frame as an example. But a lot of times when I look at a frame, I go, eh, somebody decided to make a frame today. Good for them. And it seems to me like most of the differences between that frame and another frame are cosmetic. At which point, eh, buy what you want, but it doesn't really, I'm not, it doesn't, as, as, uh, who was it? Who was it? Was it Shania? No. It is Shania. That don't impress me much, as I, as I would say, as Shania would say. So let's look at this frame. I'm amazed that I remembered that. Uh, let's look at this frame and see if we can find something interesting or innovative about it. The first thing we'll do is we'll just categorize it, okay? So it is a split deck school bus style frame. School bus style means that there's a top plate and a bottom plate with arms coming out of it, which a lot of the frames in this category are what, oh, school bus style. Frame. I don't know why we call them school bus. I just heard that once and it sort of made sense to me. Split deck means that we have a separate plate for the top and, or for the back and the front. So here's the back plate right here. Here's the front plate right here. And split deck, what, what the way that they do a split deck frame is the back frame will be on top of the arms, the front frame, the front plate will be on bottom of the arms. And what that does is it gives you the advantage of a very uh, a, a, a slammed build with short standoffs. It gives you a centralized center of gravity, but the problem with slammed builds is there's no room for the camera. And the split deck solves that problem. You've got almost, you might have like 22, 24 millimeters of height for the, for the whole body. And then you've got like 27 millimeters of height for the camera, which gives you more room to get the camera in there. That's the problem that a split deck solves. The other thing a split deck does is it sandwiches the arms, which gives you stronger. Let's see if I can find a, a bottom view. There we go. A split deck sandwiches the arms, which gives you a stronger, just a stronger sort of construction all around. The way a lot of frames would, would do this before split decks came along is you'd have the bottom plate all on top of the arms, and then you'd have an X plate on the bottom to sort of hold everything together. And a split deck sort of saves you that complexity of having that separate part. So this is a school bus style frame with a split deck. What about the geometry? Now we talk about the geometry. Uh, it looks like it is an X geometry. I can't tell if it is a perfect square or if it's a little bit of a compressed into what we would call H style geometry. In an H geometry, the arms are compressed down into a rectangle front to back. And then the other geometry is called stretched X where the arms are squeezed together side to side and stretched uh, front. Nobody really makes stretched X frames anymore, do they? They were, they were popular for racing for a while. So this is, looks like it's an X geometry. Uh, X geometry is very good for freestyle. It's going to have very balanced pitch and roll response. You're not going to have the pit. The pit controller is not going to have to work a lot to sort of compensate for like a dead cat would be an example where the where the front arms are wider than the rear arms and it makes the pit controller work harder. So we've got a split deck school bus style frame with X geometry. 
maybe even true x, which would indicate that these were a square. I'm not 100% sure. Let's see what else stands out. Now, now that we've categorized it, we can look for ways that it differs from other examples of the class. So one thing I see is that it has a metal front end. Metal front end is going to add weight usually, but add durability and protect the camera better. I don't insist on a metal front end. I, I, I like it when I have it. I see the advantages. I like that the camera mounting seems pretty flexible. I see that we've got lots of different holes here for different types of camera so that no matter, hopefully, no matter what kind of camera I try to mount, I'm going to be able to put the camera at the right front to back spacing so I don't see any of these standoffs in view, but the camera is still protected from impacts. I like when they give you flexible camera mounting like this. Yeah, I hate it when a frame just has like one set of screw holes for the camera and it's like, well, sorry, if your camera doesn't fit that, you're just out of luck. The top plate is split. This is an extremely controversial decision to me. The reason this is a controversial decision is that it, it has the potential to really reduce the strength of the frame. So for example, if we look at the Lumineer QAVS, the original one, not the JB edition. No, not the JB edition. Thank you. The original one. Are they still selling the original one? Here we go. The original QAVS has a split top deck. And the way they have addressed the... Take damn it. The way they've addressed the durability question is to have a standoff here... You can barely see it. And this back half of the top plate attaches there. And then we've got additional standoffs here. And this front half can be removed or the back half can be removed by itself. That's, it feels to me like that is r compromising rigidity. Because now I can theoretically take the bottom plate and go like this and stretch it. And that's one of the reasons why when I modified the QAVS for my signature frame, I, I went to a, a one-piece top plate. It gets That standoff adds weight, and it feels like it compromises rigidity. Yeah, maybe you'd never know the difference, but I didn't like it. Now, what uh, Speedy Bee have done here is they have extended back this metal piece of the camera cage and attached it here. And at first that seems clever because they've avoided having an additional standoff. But I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced that it is. I wanna look at how they've done this. Yeah, so here is, I, I really would need to see this frame to be sure I'm getting this right. But if we look here, Here's the bottom plate, okay? The metal front attaches with these two screws here at the front and runs back this way. Okay. I see. So we've got some leverage here to keep that from levering back. But I don't see that in this render. Hang on a second. This is not a picture, this is a render. God dang it. See, and this in this render, the metal front goes all the way back, or at least it appears to. In this render, it does not. And do you see that in this, does this come down here? What the hell is even happening here? Can I see a real picture of the actual frame? Is this a picture? Hard to tell. No, see, here's here's my problem. If this if this picture is correct, then look at the leverage from this point down. Think about what's happening if if you apply stress right here. Okay, apply downward stress right here. Do you see that you have a gigantic lever arm 
that is going to torque this point right here. That's a huge problem. That's a huge problem. To me, if this is an accurate representation of the frame, th this is a deal breaker. We've created a gigantic lever arm where the stress applied on this point, the force applied on this point, is magnified via the length of the lever arm into this joint right here. And it feels like that has the potential to just rip the dang screw right out. Or damage the carbon. Like, you absolutely need a standoff here to, to translate force at this point down into the bottom plate and kind of box this in. That's a, that's to me is a huge design defect. Like just massive or what they could have done is extend this metal backwards further and come up like this. So this, am I making sense here? That's yeah. So what we need is we either need another standoff here so that stress this direction is translated down through the bottom plate. Because what we have right now is stress, stress this direction is torqued along this lever arm and we're going to get a massive bending stress here that is going to rip out this screw or damage the carbon. Or we could have extended this back further and gone kind of like that, which would have reduced the length of the lever arm and could have worked. But this as it is to me is a, I don't, that, that would, that would be a deal breaker for me on this frame. That's just a, that, not that, I mean, that alone, maybe you could find a way to live with it, but that just shows that whoever designed this frame wasn't thinking correctly. Like this is really cool. The placement of the XT60, very cool. The plastic mount here to help isolate the, the electronics, very cool. The built-in cooling, the built-in cooling for the O3 air unit, very cool. There's a lot of cool stuff on this frame, but that front end is a problem that absolutely should never have made it past design and QC. And it shows that if they had handed this to someone who knew what they were doing, I think unless I'm just completely misinterpreting what I'm seeing here, they would have said, that's unacceptable, don't do that. So either they didn't hand it to someone who told them that was unacceptable or they didn't listen to them. And to me, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't speak, uh, make me excited to use the frame. Because then what other mistakes have they made that I don't know about? All right, well, if I have misrepresented that in any way let's just for just spend three more minutes on this i don't uh, the one time i actually talk about a frame then i spend a half hour talking about it okay fine who is this madstech has this frame speedy b master let's just see if we can get a picture of the actual shishi let's see if we can get a picture of the actual frame real quick does he assemble it? Please assemble it, Ian. Ian. Come on, Ian. That's not the view I need, Ian. 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 Oh, there we go. Bing. No, no, no. Hell no. Well, well, this standoff here, Mel. No. I don't know, guys. Does this standoff here mitigate that? So we've got this standoff here. I mean, so technically the length of our, the, the, the stress we're gonna be getting is only, I, I might be, I might be wrong. I didn't see this standoff in the other pictures. So technically any stress here is only going to lever from here to here, okay? Because this standoff here is going to then provide counterforce and translate that stress into the bottom plate. In my head, when I was looking at the pictures, 
I didn't see this standoff, and that that might that might make me a little bit less critical. I still don't like it though. Yeah. All right. Maybe. Maybe it's not as bad as I originally thought. I still don't like it though. I don't have a great feeling about this lever arm here. I don't have a great feeling about it. All righty, that's it. That's my thoughts about the SpeedyB Master 5. It has several interesting design innovations for which I will give them credit. Moving on.